Um, so, okay, I'm, I'm Tracy Asher. Uh, I'm a cancer thriver, born and raised in Chicago, and I now live in Los Angeles, California. Um, I'd like to start with a brief history of uh, my history with cancer, just to give you an idea of what you're gonna be seeing in these photos. I was first diagnosed with stage three breast cancer on July 31st, 2014 at the age of 39. My dad took this picture the night before my mastectomy. Three years after this, I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer, which appeared in the vertebrae of my neck. Mm -hmm. Two years later, after complaining of headaches and dizziness, I went to the ER and was diagnosed with my third tumor, a brain CT scan and testing revealed stage four metastatic breast cancer on the left side of my cerebellum. Receiving every cancer diagnosis was shocking and heartbreaking. Looking toward the future seemed a monumental task. I've survived many surgeries, double mastectomy, hysterectomy, breast reconstruction, spinal surgery, and then brain surgery. I've had a portacath surgically placed for chemotherapy and immunotherapy treatments. And three times I've been subjected to radiation. Becoming the subject of a photographic series about breast cancer has been one of the most meaningful decisions I've ever made. My images are meant to alleviate fear of the unknown for anyone facing their own cancer battle. My personal and intimate moments reveal that strength, beauty, and humor are still possible even during surgeries, hair loss, and chemo treatments. When I was first diagnosed with breast cancer, I grieved for the body I was going to lose. I planned to be aggressive with treatment and I prepared to document my journey. Initially, it was to remember what I looked like before so that I could compare it to my new self when I was finished. Then I remembered something my dad always said about important milestones. He said, remember everything. This might make a great movie one day. Whether it's a happy memory or maybe not, it can still be important. With this quote in mind, it made, it made sense for, for me to hire a photographer and document my journey. Based on a recommendation, I interviewed and then hired Georgina Cates Photography. Georgina told me of her own experience with breast cancer. And since I was really nervous about modeling naked, I wanted to find a female photographer who, was, who would know how to make our photo shoots comfortable and fun. During uh, my 50 year career in photography uh, here in Chicago, I've photographed enough distressing things that should have prepared me for anything. I always preferred commercial photography because I learned early on that photojournalism forced you to be comfortable shooting in situations where people are hurt or in distress. And I've always had a real hard time with that. My career began with shooting weddings. It was while shooting a wedding that I learned a valuable lesson which would follow me forever and even shaped my daughter's journey with cancer. At a wedding, I was photographing the bride outside under a tree. There was a robin, which of course had been eating red berries and decided this was the time to poop on the bride's veil and dress. The bride was screaming and crying. 
They immediately got the dress off of her and surprisingly, the local dry cleaner was an actual guest. He grabbed the dress and veil and ran. He had everything clean and was back within one hour. When all was calm and everyone was able to laugh at the situation, they turned to me and asked, did I get the picture? And I didn't. It wasn't a problem, but it was a bummer. And I felt like I had let the couple down. This distressing moment was going to be one of their favorite stories to tell. And that's why it's important to just get the shot. You may never use it, but nobody knows when a moment might become an important memory. Tracy and I talked about the pros and cons of photo documenting her journey with cancer. She had hired a professional photographer who would take care of any really personal or the nude shots. I, I wouldn't shoot those. Um, I would never do any photography with my daughter like that. But she also worried about missing important moments in the hospitals while she's out of out of it from anesthesia and pain medication. So she asked if I could do that part. I thought I was prepared to photograph anything, but in a hospital dealing with my daughter's cancer, it was a very big struggle. I got to Los Angeles the day before her first surgery, took some photos at a dinner with Tracy's friends, but I was full of anxiety. There wasn't anything I could really do in the hospital except be an emotional support and maybe try to get some photos. I really didn't think it was a great idea. We got Tracy to the hospital the next morning and waited for her to get through surgery. Seeing my daughter after surgery made it very hard to take pictures, but I half-heartedly took a few. The next day, I returned to Tracy's hospital room, and that's when things became much clearer. And I understood why she wanted me to take pictures. Even though she was in post-surgery pain, I saw beauty in her and my son-in-law, Jim. And even in all the medical support she had, I saw lighting, color, design, hope, happiness, and love that created photo opportunities. Though I felt foolish, I started shooting in earnest. It certainly wasn't easy at times. I was embarrassed to be moving around trying to get good angles while my daughter was lying in the hospital bed. I just kept taking photos, Tracy with her doctors, nurses, Jim, everything. These were the happy moments I was hoping for. As, as I went through chemotherapy, hair loss, radiation, and reconstruction, it was easy for me and Georgina to keep shooting almost every day because she lived really close and I was getting more comfortable modeling for her. She started showing doctors our photos. They were all impressed and described the pictures as a new and important way to explain a journey with cancer. We were encouraged to continue our work and develop it into a book. Georgina, the artist, wanted tears and deep emotions. I, the pragmatist, was past grieving. I kept arguing with her, who is this book for? Why are we making a book about how depressing cancer is? Why do we want to make people cry when they're in a fight for their lives? I wanted the viewer to have their own emotions. For me, it was fear of the unknown that was more debilitating than the fear of dying. I only had to convince myself once that I wasn't going to die. Then it was all the unknowns that I had to deal with. Every step was something new to research and worry about, and that felt totally unfair. I wish there was something that could help me understand exactly what to expect. I finally came to the conclusion 
that I could create something that would expose breast cancer to anyone who wants to see what it looks like. And they could do that at their own pace and from the comfort of their own home. At, a, at about that same time, Georgina proudly emailed me a group of her photos. They were beautifully produced and really inspired me. In 2016, I was working with Georgina almost every day, but all she wanted to do was keep recreating moments to photograph, and that felt disingenuous to me. So in early 2017, our differences and arguments got to be too much. Georgina and I had one more massive disagreement and things appeared to be over. I was sad and, and afraid that all our work would be for naught. I was totally at the mercy of the hard drive she gave me, my own selfies and whatever my dad had taken. I saw no way to continue with the project and I convinced myself it wasn't an important story to tell anyway. Why would anyone wanna see me go through something that thousands of women go through? When Tracy told me Georgina was out, I wasn't sure whether or not she could move forward with anything. Tracy was really upset. We discussed ideas of what to do or should we just give up? Tracy and I were still working regular jobs, so we were too busy to consider moving forward. And just like that, the project was over. It was very depressing. Tracy was doing well, and during her next break from work, she came to Chicago to have a good time and forget about the stress, and she seemed to be getting better. The thing was, she kept complaining about having a sore neck from sleeping on our sofa bed. Although this put a damper on our fun, searching for a new and improved pillow gave us something else to focus on, and we celebrated our time together. After returning to Los Angeles, the pain in my neck got worse. It spread down my right arm and was finally too much to take. My oncologist ordered an MRI. Before I could even get home from the MRI facility, I got a phone call that he wanted to see me a few hours later. My breast cancer had metastasized into the vertebrae of my neck. My husband and I walked directly from the doctor's office to the hospital and started calling family and friends. I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks and had a lot of visitors. The surgery went well, but I woke up wearing a neck brace and with a very sore throat. With a new diagnosis, a new art project seemed more important and gave me purpose again. This was something I could use to tell a story of then versus now not just a story of how one photographer saw my breast cancer journey. Now it's a project about how a cancer patient can use their previous knowledge as a foundation for new experiences with a little less fear of the unknown. But I needed a new photographer who lived closer to me than my dad. So I hired a friend who was starting a new business Stacy Kane Photography, and asked if she would be willing to shoot photos for me. I had seen some of her work and liked that her subjects always looked engaged and happy. Because I wore my neck brace all day, every day for seven months, my dad visited often and we started taking photographs again of me even more seriously a backup plan, a collection. We weren't sure, but it was a great distraction. It was also the fire I needed to wake up every day with something important to do instead of giving in to depression. Tracy was in the hospital for so long that her mother, sister, me, and friends were able to visit her there a lot. Like before and without having to be asked, I took more pictures, but this time 
I took a little different approach. I shot more creatively, sensitive, and even some more fun pictures to keep everyone in a positive mood with purpose. My idea was to shoot and shoot a lot, keeping me busy and in a fun mood. Georgina was long gone. And although the new photographer Tracy hired was a friend, we didn't know much about her style. So to be safe and to keep both of us distracted, I kept taking pictures. Back home, I began to realize that I couldn't work and, send we and spend weeks in LA helping Tracy and Jim, so I decided to retire. I also wanted to see a book published for Tracy, no matter what. I just hoped we would have enough photos to work with. While at home, I made sure I kept busy by processing everybody's photos. I spent a lot of time on the computer. I went all the way back to the beginning of all the photography that was taken. Because of all the Photoshop tools available to me, I could make images better. I do believe processing is a very important part of a really great photograph. And again, it kept me busy. I wanted all the photos to be different, expressive, artistic, not just snapshots. Stacy was giving us image files straight out of the camera and put her faith in my skill to make them look good. I was thinking about photo continuity, black and white, color, add special effects. Are these for art or just documentation? Lots of decisions to make. Yes, emotionally, it was very painful for me and still is. And, and to look at the photos and see my daughter going through this. But the upside was I wanted Tracy to achieve that book. I was busy. I had purpose and I was determined to make that book happen. So now we're, it's 2018 and another cancer diagnosis later. I'm finally comfortable with the idea of developing a newer and better book. I started to scan paperwork, organize diary entries, write the narrative and educational parts of the book. And Stacy and I discussed what kind of photo we wanted to end with. A year later, in September of 2019, my dad took some time to visit. We wanted to celebrate that I was two years cancer free. And the book was at a point that I needed his expertise as a professional photographer to go any further. Our mission was to visit every bookstore, every bookstore we could find and search for anything similar to what one cancer patient was becoming. Although I tried to keep it a secret, the entire time I was suffering from stinging headaches. Eventually, I admitted my pain to my dad and Jim, and they finally convinced me to call my oncologist for advice. And he told me to go to the ER. After spending six horrible hours in the ER, Tracy finally got a CT scan. It never crossed my mind to photograph anything that day. It was, it was just too horrible. I couldn't shoot anything and my heart was breaking. The breast cancer had metastasized this time in my brain. I was going to have brain surgery, which just sounded insane. And I needed something to look forward to. I, set, I silently kept repeating to myself, make sure dad's taking pictures, make sure dad's taking pictures, because this book is going to be crazy. As I was being rolled away to brain surgery, I continued the mantra in my head, make sure dad's taking pictures over and over until anesthesia knocked me out. And it worked. According to my dad, as I was being rolled into the ICU after surgery, I, I gave him the take pictures signal with my finger. Stacy was taking a break from photography while pregnant. So once I left the hospital, my dad and I started gathering together photos and choosing the ones we needed to tell a story 
of one cancer patient with three cancer diagnoses. The way to move forward would be to embrace the idea of a collection, a collection of images by multiple photographers, family, friends, selfies. The question was, are we desensitized enough to work on this together? I knew my dad wanted to stay and help me with day-to-day -day tasks after brain surgery, but because this tumor caught us off guard, he'd have to go back home first. While back in Chicago, through his connection with the Sharpenberg Gallery at the Donk House, he secured the promise of a one cancer patient exhibit at the beginning of May, 2020. Now we have to figure out how to tell a huge story with a limited number of images and without including any text that the book would have. Naming and organizing the photos became incredibly important. It would be the only and easiest way for guests to follow such a big story. My dad and I worked on one cancer patient every morning when we were together and also when we were a thousand miles apart. When, when Tracy gave me the take photo signal after her brain surgery, I had absolutely jumped into action. The nurses must have thought I was nuts. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Even if people thought I was crazy, taking pictures of my daughter in distress. This is uh, the story of how we secured the Sharpenberg Gallery exhibit. I had been a volunteer photographer at the Donk House, the German American Cultural Center here in Chicago for a couple of years. And I was friends with the curator. I had exhibited my photography with them before and I trusted their opinion. I approached them about the possibility of hosting uh, the one cancer patient photo exhibit. I thought it could be a cool way to get exposure for Tracy's book and Tracy agreed. One cancer patient was back on. The Cultural Center jumped at the chance to give us the gallery space. They understood the importance of telling this story. As we planned for the exhibit, I thought of something Tracy had written. While we may share a diagnosis and be united against this disease, ultimately we are each one cancer patient. So I introduced the idea of opening the exhibit up to other women whose own cancer journeys played a positive role in their art. We discussed it and agreed that I should call friends, artists, studios, and galleries until we found our artists, and I did. At this time, Tracy was in the middle of her chemotherapy treatments during her 45th birthday. I was excited to visit again, celebrate, and take a lot more photos. To me, this was the most important important assignment I've ever had. It felt like coming out of retirement, but instead of being paid in dollars, I was getting paid with a feeling of accomplishment and love. Beyond the great doctors and nurses helping to heal my daughter, it was working on the book and now the exhibit that enormously helped me in the healing process. Working with Tracy and her husband, Jim, sparked an excitement in all of us that continued to be a welcome distraction from scary health concerns. While in LA again, we made time to go out shooting whenever Tracy felt strong enough, or we decided to be more relaxed and set up shops, shots in the comfort of her home. We continued to shoot photos. The Donk House exhibit, was quickly approaching and there was still a lot to do. I came back home to Chicago and then went back to LA again to help Jim and Tracy. They were both working by then, but still needed help. In LA, when I wasn't driving Tracy back and forth to work, we spent our days discussing the photography, going through images and making selections again. We decided what would go in the book, the exhibit, both or neither. Most of all, we were enjoying life. And I even bought a new camera. 
since I had exhibition and curating experience, and because the Donk House was in Chicago, I spearheaded the show by designing marketing materials and planning logistics with the other four artists and our curator. So now it's March 2020, and we all know what happened. COVID quarantine began. I was laid off from work. The exhibit was canceled and my dad had to get home before everything shut down. It felt like the world stopped moving. I was happy to have extra time to deal with my story. I now had time to write, rewrite, share my writing with other thrivers, writers, and doctors to get their input, questions, concerns. I took online book publishing classes, and I did all this while continuing with chemotherapy. During the COVID quarantine, calls between me and Tracy were daily and some, sometimes multiple times a day. I was putting in hours of processing and printing and then reprocessing and reprinting. I was forced to work with what we had and the photos needed to be perfect. Well, if you're a photographer for 55 years, you become really anal retentive. There were a lot of cell phone pictures. It was great to have them as options, but just because we all have cell phones with cameras doesn't mean everyone knows how to use them. The exhibit might have been paused, but I never acted like it was over because Tracy was crystal clear that she had a duty to help other cancer patients and caregivers with all the information and experience she held. As her father and business partner, I was going to make sure it happened. She taught me the definition of the word thriver, which she has always embodied. Another person who I love and always worried about was Tracy's husband, Jim. While caring for my daughter alone during quarantine, I know he had his own artistic outlets outlets, like writing music and especially painting. I saw his new paintings as he posted them on social media and I had another creative light bulb moment. I wanted to, con to collaborate. My photography superimposed onto his paintings added another layer to our exhibit and now gave Jim something to distract him and to look forward to. It does illustrate how a passion project, not like, unlike a disease, can be contagious. In January, 2021, we hit some milestones. It had been almost a year since quarantine began. It was just over one year that I'd been in remission. The Donk House exhibit was rescheduled for April 30th and one cancer patient was afforded the opportunity to be online too. We were now planning a hybrid event. Keeping it all organized was not easy while also struggling with the PTSD of cancer and a term I learned, scanxiety. Marketing and advertising for a book and hybrid exhibit had to be tailored to publishers, organizations, and social media, making sure the same story would be told among three separate platforms, each with a different amount of available space, felt like putting together a 5,000 piece puzzle. Uh, I'm getting a little older and I've, I'm finding it's harder to do photography f-stops, shutter speeds, ISO, and focusing all become a little difficult to manage on the newer cameras. And Photoshop, well, it keeps upgrading. And but he, even with these hurdles, one cancer patient has never stopped being the glue that will keep me and Tracy from going, excuse me, batshit crazy. With stress about her, un her uncertain future. The April 30th Donk House opening reception and the virtual opening the next day were both very successful. Thank you.
So what's next? Personally, I've decided to try mentoring other cancer patients. Physically, I, I need to get some stamina back and stay vigilant with my health. Professionally, I need to get back to my career as a costumer on TV shows so that I don't lose my health insurance, but I can't let up on one cancer patient either. There's still so much to do like writing grants and sponsorship letters and reaching out to publishers and finishing my website and producing uh, vegan cooking videos on YouTube. Today, I still feel that there is a deeper reason why I've fought cancer three times. Despite any obstacles and in spite of naysayers, I am confident that my, that my passion to help anyone who receives a cancer diagnosis will not fade. Because of the wedding story I told you at the beginning of this presentation, I've raised my daughters to believe that even inopportune times may be worth documenting. It never occurred to me how the statement would come back at me. We didn't realize it early on, but it was art with love that really helped Tracy, Jim, and myself through this harrowing eight-year experience. And this now continues through the generation generosity of Gilda's Club and advocate Aurora Health. Last, one cancer patient has been educational and therapeutic for Tracy me and everyone it has touched. There will be much more to come for one cancer patient. We will take the exhibit and presentation or talk about it anywhere we need in order to help as many people as we can. My dad and I would like to thank Gilda's Club and especially Sophie, Kelly, and Kathleen in partnership with Advocate Aurora Health, Kiki and Peggy, for making this presentation happen during the very important time designated for cancer survivors and thrivers. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.